David Rauschendorfer here from Cybersecurity Resource and today I just want to go over and talk about what it takes to develop a security program in an organization either coming as a, in as a consultant uh, or actually you know getting hired on and trying to develop and mature that security program from scratch so we're gonna walk straight through that today and as we get started, we're going to go through uh, some initial information to understand the methodology that we're going to be discussing. So really the objective of this discussion is to allow any IT security practitioner the ability to kind of implement this perspective model into their cybersecurity program, really to either you know, take on and develop that cybersecurity program from scratch, stepping into it. So much of this approach is really derived from a number of IT security consultants that kind of worked in several industries uh, that really, you know, have developed this into a methodology of working with and consulting with organizations to develop their security programs at multiple levels. Anything from kind of a, a small business that has certain uh, regulatory requirements that they're facing that they need to make sure that they have a fairly mature security program to kind of medium to large size organizations uh, for further maturing and management of those security programs as well. So a lot of experience and knowledge has been poured into this methodology uh, in making sure that it's something that you can comprehend and take and enact today. So it's really this whole methodology was designed to be built on the concepts uh, that have really illustrated in all of our previous books and research uh, with a couple different specific differences that we're going to kind of go over. So a lot of this that we're going to be talking about today to find the tools and resources that you need to actually implement these it, you'll find that available within your cybersecurity consultants network here at cybersecurity resource you can sign up today and be able to instantly access this consultants network be able to ask questions to industry leaders uh, be able to implement these tools resources and practices that we're going to be discussing today so let's get into some of the differences that uh, this methodology is going to be focusing on uh, that may differ from some of our previous uh, discussions and, and methodologies put out in the past. So this one that we're talking about today is really focused on the small and medium sized business market. Um, you know, many of our books and research that we do are really industry agnostic. Uh, so this methodology that we're going over is really gonna be focused on you know, implementing a security program for that small and medium sized business group. So they, these uh, methodologies like we were discussing include supporting workbooks uh, by being able to join that cybersecurity consultants network. You're able to access all of those uh, workbooks, templates, downloadable tools, resources that you're gonna need. That's gonna streamline this implementation process for you. Uh, and especially as a consultant, we know anything that streamlines our processes just means more revenue for us. Uh, so, you know, being a, that's the whole benefit of becoming a part of the consultants network is being able to take advantage of these uh, tools and resources that other industry professionals have developed and used in their consulting practices. So the third thing that uh, to go over for this model, it's both uh, level oriented and self paced. So it's something that you can understand and be able to implement, but not have to worry about hitting specific timelines. You know, uh, many organizations move at different paces. So this strategy and methodology is going to allow you to and be accommodated uh, to any of those business factors that are coming into place. There's a number of subtasks and all of these subtasks are designed to be kind of level rating. So you can start taking a look at you know where you're at from a maturity standpoint within your organization as well as being able to report up to management where the progress lies as far as implementing this security program and methodology uh, in the organization as well <clears throat> so there's some methodology overview items uh, that we just wanted to go over there 
And before we get started, we just want to cover uh, a couple items here. So this framework is designed to help uh, with that mission of providing a step-by-step -step approach that anyone can follow. Again, that's kind of part of the mission statement for Cybersecurity Consultants Network. We're really looking to foster that next generation of consultants and IT security professionals. So with that, you know, we're trying to make this information available uh, and, and out there and help just these industry experts. So all of the examples of these situations and a lot of the cases that we may be talking about you know, all occurred throughout you know, the expertise that's been provided here from all of that consulting. Um, you know, in many of these situations, they can start and uh, take a step-by-step -step approach to making sure that you have valid data uh, when these things occur. So really start looking at these aspects as you start to walk through them. If something happens and you need to uh, make updates, you can always retrograde back to the following step uh, and then bring things back up to pace with the rest of the security program. So by following these next five security program steps, you're gonna be able to implement a cybersecurity program in any organization. All right, so now that we've got past the introduction, past the getting started methodology overview, let's really break down into what these five steps are and get into them. All right, so the first step, step one, is when you walk into the organization, you need to centralize all of your previous security findings, right? So if they are a brand new organization, maybe they've never done that. But in many cases, the organization's been operating for a couple of years. They've had possibly some type of uh, security assessment done, some type of audit may be done, depending on what type of business practices they're in. So you need to centralize all of this information so that you can get a good starting point. So, uh, you know, that's really starting to give you an understanding of their environment and giving you a good baseline. So identifying the organization's all previous governance, risk, and compliance findings is important. It enables an organization to understand what has been measured, the associated story for those findings, because there's always a story behind these findings on why they're there, as well as a good indicator of the current state, right? You're looking to identify that baseline uh, where you're starting out at. So this step is absolutely critical in order to start the process for information management to understand that what will be needed when you start requesting funding, right? You're needing that baseline so you could get that understanding of what the current state is. Is it fairly mature? Maybe you have operational processes in place and you have, you know, a good functional baseline going and a mature security program going and you're just looking to shore up some of these security risks that were identified as you centralized all of these previous security findings. And that would be amazing. But in many instances, you're starting from scratch or you're starting from things that are very unorganized. So you need to start setting this baseline and start looking to understand what that uh, path is of where the security program needs to go. Uh, so as you start looking at funding and we're going to talk into some of these steps here. So as you get into step one, some of the main reasons you want to make sure you're looking at those previous findings is when they were identified, they did have some merit. Whoever identified those as security findings did see them as risks or gaps in the organization when they came upon them. So it's something to, to definitely identify. And what's commonly found is, especially uh, in um, organizations that are starting out where you're doing some consulting with, they may have been told about these risks or gaps previously, but have never done anything about them. So they're still technically a risk and you can highlight that it was identified previously and that the organization and management needs to take some ownership of that and be aware of it. So many of those uh, findings are gonna provide a lot of great insights into where that current state is like we talked about. And it's really going to start giving you the opportunity to uh, confirm some scope for the organization, right? What does the security program mean for the organization? What is in scope for it? 
you know, how big is the organization? So uh, many of these reviews that have often been done, they might have been scoped for only a certain department or a certain section of the whole organization. And maybe it was because they needed to meet certain regulatory requirements. Maybe they were HIPAA or PCI compliance and regulatory requirements there requiring them to get these assessments done. So understanding the scope of that, the requirements behind it, and then also understanding, you know, how your security program is going to fit in the entire organization as well is going to be key in centralizing uh, all of these security findings, uh, taking a look at that, and then being able to scope out your security program. So step one is really key in setting this baseline, getting an understanding of what the current state is, uh, the scope of the security program, the requirements that uh, have been scoped in in the past that you're facing today, um, what kind of data management and those type of things are, that are taking place there. So that's really getting into step one. That's really gonna give you a solid understanding of how the organization operates, uh, where they've been measured in the past and how they've uh, been kind of held up to that measure. So really getting into step one here after performing uh, all of that step one, you're gonna understand where the scope and the breadth of the previous security assessments that have been performed within the organization, if they were adequate to support the development of a security program moving forward, right? So if they were really only scoped for one department that needed to be PCI compliant, but you have other departments that are still uh, facing security requirements, you know, what other requirements and regulations are you facing across the organization? You know that you need to be accountable for within your security program. So getting an understanding of that full scope and the breadth of the not only the security assessments, but as well as where you need your security program to manage uh, those risks and vulnerabilities for the organization and make sure on a compliance standpoint that you're doing what you need to uh, to be compliant with those regulatory requirements as well. So picking out those security frameworks that you're going to align your security program to is, is really important here. There's a number of great frameworks out there, right? So if you're looking to be HIPAA compliant, if you're looking to be PCI compliant, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna base your whole security program on PCI or HIPAA specifically, right? Many organizations are looking at the NIST framework or maybe an ISO framework, an international standard, or the, the NIST framework and some of those, the cybersecurity framework or NIST 800 series and looking at those frameworks that are a little more intuitive in how you need to implement that and providing in more additional guidelines for organizations and the steps they need to do to, to measure up against those frameworks. Uh, it's a lot easier when, you know, working in those type of frameworks sometimes rather than focusing, focusing specifically on the regulatory requirements. Now, you always want to make sure you're meeting those regulatory requirements, of course, but in most cases, these frameworks are going to not only ensure that you are meeting those requirements, but also ensure that you're implementing sound security processes while you meet those requirements as well. So. The key thing as you're really doing this, you're really collecting a lot of information, you're really starting to wrap your head around what the regulations, what the requirements are in the organization, what type of scope your security program needs to entail. But the good thing or the thing to really keep in mind here is don't let great be the enemy of good at this point, right? You're really looking for this 30,000 foot picture and getting an understanding, grabbing your arms, putting your arms around everything, being able to tell the story and paint the picture of where you are today and where you're going uh, to management and the board if needed. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have this level of knowledge that you need to speak intelligently about this, but don't think that everything needs to be perfect today. If you're really just getting started, you understand that this is gonna be a process, that this is something you're gonna to have to build into the organization and that it's not gonna happen overnight, all right? So don't let great be the enemy of good at this point, right? This is really step one. So the goal is to improve findings so that they include the measurement of the 
full scope of the security program as well as the appropriate security domains. So uh, as you look at some of those frameworks, right, there's always security categories, security domains that you're facing. Um, that's why things like the NIST CSF framework are so great with uh, the, the main security domains that, that you're facing, they become very uh, clear in reporting uh, up to management and where in measuring yourself against those domains and, and things of that nature. That's why it's keen on implementing one security framework that you're going to uh, develop your security program around. All right, so we're really getting in to step one here. Now step two, right? Okay, so we have our arms around this security program. Step two is really from an enterprise-wide, you're developing an enterprise-wide communication and reporting strategy. So that may seem weird right now that you're going to create this communication and reporting strategy when in reality you're just getting started, right? But it's really important that you take this step seriously and you make sure you implement it in the beginning stages. So after completing step one, uh, the you've kind of reached this maturity level of one and you should have the data you need to start communicating and interacting with the organization and management, right? You need to paint this picture of what the current state is, where you're going, and what those requirements are that you're facing. So most likely the existing team is over allocated at this point. Chances are that you may need some additional resources and funding. So step two will entail, uh, entail two primary elements. The first is start building the mechanism to begin providing management with the information they need to make informed decisions about how to move forward. And the second is something that we're, is going to come later, right? We're gonna spoon feed this into it. So first, we're gonna just focus on how we need to approach management now that we have this 30,000 foot view of what the current state is, as well as where we need to focus moving forward. So as long as the information about the current state has been provided to management, right? Now we're, we've already talked about this, we've gathered everything. Uh, we've established this uh, into a centralized corrective action plan, a risk register, uh, that tool that is available through the consultants network. At this point in the process, when accountability for security transitions to management, now that they are aware, they can no longer be negligent about these findings. They have to do something about it, right? If you have a security breach, and it was identified that management was aware of these risks, but they did nothing about it, then they have to claim negligence. Now your fines are gonna be extremely more expensive. All right, so now you need to make sure the management understands that we need to start creating some type of strategy around these risks, right? And timelines and things, no matter how long they are, and you know, just understanding that the business is going to take a while to implement some of these aspects. So the second element is going to be just as important is to begin the security training and awareness component for the organization. Right? We said we were setting up an enterprise-wide communication and reporting system. Right. So key point is we're going to do this primarily through security training and awareness for the resources across the organization. From this point forward, the security effort will be interacting and communicating with every aspect of the organization. That's why we need everybody to understand that they have a role in security, that management supports this initiative, and that we're going to be rolling out some changes that may affect how they operate day to day. Right. So that is the key to ensuring that you have that communication mechanism established so that you're not just forcing change into an environment that isn't been hasn't been made aware that this change is coming and why it's happening. Right. So we want to work with the business, not against the business. So the more you can educate and inform the business and the individuals within it about the efforts, and the quicker you will be able to implement the change and build a security-minded culture, right? 
We got to dub that term. Security minded culture is what we're after. Your training and awareness program becomes the grease to propel the program forward. The better you can educate and inform, the better your security program is going to be implemented. So here's um, some level steps, step-by-step -step levels that you can start to look at for implementing this. You need to develop that internal security service catalog. So it's very common in organizations from an IT perspective that you have an IT service catalog, right? You need to create a security service catalog as well, understanding how you are going to support the business, you know, there's always a number of things that can go into this. It's very scalable across any business. Here, I'm highlighting the four pillars and building blocks that you need to focus on, being risk management, vulnerability management, uh, policies and procedure development, um, and then incident management. And of course, in many organizations, there's some sort of project consulting that's going on because you need to make sure that as you take on new uh, data sharing relationships and bring in new solutions into the organization that they're being implemented with security in mind. So that's where your project consulting comes into place. So that's really level 2.1 there. 2.2, developing existing security architecture capabilities and procedures. So taking a look about how your business operates. Is it a very small business using all third-party cloud providers? Do they have their own data center? Do they have their own architecture set up? What does that architecture look like? Um, are they gonna be able to maintain, manage operations with this architecture? If something were to happen, you know, how protected are they? So from a very high level, you know, take a look at maybe a, a network da diagram, uh, data flow diagrams, operational diagrams of how maybe the business uh, workflows work uh, with the information that they're sharing. Uh, all of those components from an architecture capability and procedure are going to be important to understand from a high level so that you know how to work within the business. And then you're going to have to develop those internal resourcing and security capability dashboards and procedures. So from a governance standpoint, we are able to be able to have those reporting capabilities out to management, to, to the board, and then as well as to the existing, you know, organization at different levels, right? Depending on the size and the structure of the organization, you want to keep everybody informed on what's going on. So being able to give them a role within the security posture is going to be important. Level 2.4, implement tactical incident management. So you're going to have to make sure that you can survive a breach or some type of security incident in the organization. And when you're working, especially as a vendor, when you're working with clients, they're going to ensure, they're going to make sure that you have this capability. It's always one of the first things that gets verified when creating these relationships um, with vendors. So if you're a vendor in pretty much any industry, having some type of incident management practice is going to be key. That's why we offer this incident management program run books that are available in the consultants network that you can walk through these full workflows and implementing that program and have the evidence you need to be able to show any clients that you have that you have mature implementation of a incident response program uh, develop security training and awareness program so this is really your communication you want to not only train resources about what their role is in security and then common things that they can look out for from a security perspective um, and then also you know it's going to get them into that security minded culture security mindset in how security actually works within their day-to-day -day practices and all of those aspects right it's going to start warming them up to this aspect that we need to be and more cognizant and understand that there's a security aspect here that we all play a role in. Uh, we want to have some level of peer reviewed management roadshow, right? And so this can be done in many ways, depending on the size of the organization. 
Uh, you can often hear it be identified as maybe an IT security council, um, IT council, something like that. Uh, this is allowing a lot of different levels of the organization and management to be able to have uh, a say, have feedback in how you're managing the information assets for the organization, right? So it's not just IT. You as security consultants are looking to implement security practices which could change how the operations work for the business, especially if they don't have any security practices implemented today. So you want to make sure that you're communicating that through management, through these peer-reviewed management roadshows, uh, as well as being able to communicate why you're doing it, allow them to have that chance to get their feedback in. Uh, deliver enhanced management roadshow, right? Especially in organizations dealing with boards um, or just higher level management, being able to communicate what the security program's doing, why it's doing it, what benefits it has for the organization, how you're going to help with the bottom line of the organization. All of these things are important to understand for the various levels of management. So these communications and reporting systems are gonna be key for your security program to be effective in communicating what you're doing, why you're doing it, and why you need the organization's support. All right, now we're really getting into step three, the development of the security program structure. Now, there's many levels that you could think of this on, but let's take a look at it from a very high level. So your operational leaders in security or not across the organization are required to look at your current situation and provide the best options available for the data to move forward, right? How are you gonna move the organization forward? How are you gonna move it forward with the security program? To this point, most of your tasks have been associated with collecting the organization's information about the gaps and your organization's security profile, business workflows, things of that nature. Now here in step three, you will now use this information to develop and provide options for building a repeatable security program system for remediating these gaps in the most effective way, manner, and possible effective outcome through your corrective action plan and working with the organization. So here, there are many different types of security program structures that can work. It's varying uh, depending on the business itself. There's so many different situations that can uh, come out of this. So for example, your organization could be a very large health system with many individual hospitals with each having their own internet connection, right? In this situation, it may make sense to build a highly distributed security program structure with regional security teams and governance due to the nature of risk distribution. So if they're all working, if you're a very distributed organization, all working, uh, with your own kind of networks, maybe it makes sense to have a distributed security program. Further, even in this example situation, there are still multiple security program structure that can be applied with varying pros and cons to the business. So even if you have a very distributed structure across your organization, maybe it still makes sense to have a centralized security program. Do you have a centralized IT program? You know, maybe there's ways that you can piggyback off of how your current structure uh, is already taking place. So that may affect the type of security program that you recommend uh, to implement for the organization. But our research has shown that executive management responds best when these options are provided with clear pros and cons for these potential options supported by the information you have collected to this point. So during right now, step three, the organization has collected all of this information and you're going to develop a custom fit security program and you're looking for a maturity level of three in supporting the business and building and leading the way forward. All right, so we're looking to really have that security program structure. Do you have a centralized program, centralized policies and procedures that are gonna govern the entire organization where then the procedures can be customized for different departments, 
uh, based on their workflows and security responsibilities, things of that nature? Or is it going to be distributed based on different units? They have their own policies and procedures that are really governing them based on, on their distributed workflows. Right? So there's some options that you can take a look at there. There's probably gonna be something that makes the most sense to you, but you're gonna wanna provide some of those clear options um, out just weighing your pros and cons and obviously making your pitch for what makes the most sense for your security program or for your client you know, as you're discussing this. So now that you have your security structure established, are you going to be distributed? You know, what is the scope of that security program? What is it going to entail? What security framework you're going to be using? You know, that's when you're really developing that security program. All right. So we started to initially look at your incident management program already. And now in step four, we're looking at your risk management program, right? So you're looking at all of the avenues, all of the channels that you're gonna be measuring risk across your organization. We have the uh, risk management program runbook guide in the consultants network that you can walk through, identifying all of those workflows, identifying the roles and responsibilities and have that secure risk management program documentation needed to have a secure and mature security risk program. So in this one, the, it's one of the most important processes that you'll develop for your security program is how you measure risk. That's really what the business is concerned about. How are you reducing risk for the organization? Um, so the more efficient these processes are, the better information you'll be able to give to the business in making informed decisions in the future. And in many times your purse strings can be tied to how well you're measuring and managing risk and communicating the need to do so. So at the conclusion of this task in step four in developing of your risk management program for your clients and for an organization, you're gonna have that functioning uh, program understanding all of the channels that you're going to be measuring risk, how you're going to measure risk, and all of the requirements you're facing there, and what the resource requirements are, obviously, to, to be able to fulfill that. So as we get into step five here, we have looked at all of our security programs, incident management, risk management, you know, vulnerability management is going to be a part of that. Your security program has been identified, the framework you're going to use, you're able to leverage the security policies and procedures templates for the NIST CSF framework within the consultants network. You have all of this readily available to download and implement at any client organization and customize to your heart's content. And now that's where we're getting. Implement decisions of management. You have your roadshow, you have your, your path forward. Management has an understanding of the framework the organization is following, the requirements that they are facing from a governance perspective for managing security going forward. You've communicated out to the organization how this actually is going to look, and then you actually are going to implement this decision that management has made, that you have worked with management to you know, communicate and then pushed out to the organization. So these techniques can be measured with kind of a status, a progress, right? We're really getting into a lot of the projects of implementing these things. So it's a lot of project management standpoint. Um, so you need to implement positive change throughout the organization with cost avo avoidance in their environment. So how do we do that, right? We're gonna look at these five steps for implementation. So implementing that risk management program, again, you have the tools and resources right there in the consultants network to download, be able to document all of the workflows that are available, document the procedures, the policies associated to risk management, the roles, responsibilities, all of that is readily available within the documentation guides uh, for risk management. You're gonna transition to a tactical incident management to standard practice, right? So initially you were developing 
what your incident management practices were even going to look like right now you need to implement that how can somebody even communicate to the organization that a possible security event has taken place do they know how to communicate that security event what type of processes are taking place that's where again in the consultants network you have your incident management program guide that you can download and customize for any organization to make sure that they have these processes in place you're going to perform program reporting. Now you have that baseline of where the current security program lies. Now you need to build off of that and have some reporting to show progress and the movement of, you know, hopefully the reduction of risk, the management of vulnerabilities, and how the security program is maturing from, you know, where the current state was to now these practices that you are implementing. You're gonna perform your ongoing security services, right? So we talked about implementing those vulnerability management practices. Those are probably gonna be an ongoing service. Internal risk assessments you may be taking on. Assessments for third party risk, uh, third party data sharing relationships. Maybe you're acquiring other organizations. Maybe you have other uh, sub businesses that you need to assess. There's a number of things that you may need to assess there. Any you know solutions you're bringing into the environment, they need to have some type of security assessment to in ensure that you know your data stays secure as they're being transitioned into these third-party solutions. So all of these ongoing security services need to be implemented as you were reviewing them and understanding the resources that it would take to, to provide that, right? Or even outsource that depending on the size and business function that you're looking for. And then you're gonna need to have this remediation roadmap established. So in the centralization of all of the current findings, you were creating this corrective action plan for this organization and this risk register that could be communicated up to management on what the current state is and what you're facing. So you have this kind of remediation roadmap or corrective action plan that you need to now follow implement and start tracking your progress towards uh, to continuously improve the maturity and security for this organization, right? So now you have this project tool that you can use to track progress towards as well to show the value of the security program and the effort that's been implemented into pr protecting uh, the integrity of the data and reputation for the, for the organization. So hopefully you found this helpful. This is your Security Consultants Network, how to develop a security program in any organization. Come check us out at Cybersecurity Resource. If you found this video helpful, make sure that you are kind of sharing this out with your networks. We want to build up this community of cybersecurity professionals. Thank you.